Welcome back everyone. In the last video, we created this mosaic billet. Today, we're gonna to get it tiled out, forge welded, drawn out. We'll reveal the pattern and who knows, we may even make a knife with it. So let's get to it. All right, so our billet is uh, around six inches, not a lot to work with. Um, I would have liked to have forward weighed it one more time. And if you watch the previous video, you'll see that whole process. But it would have given me a tighter pattern, uh, a little more density there. But I'm just working with a, I started out with a 21 layer billet. You'd have to start out with a 35, 40 layer billet to really get a big billet with a tight pattern. So what I've got here is I've marked it out at 45 degrees. Now, some people use 35, some use 40, some even use 50 or 55, but 45 is what I calculated when I created this billet for the width and the height of the tiles uh, for what I had to work with. And hopefully my calculations are right. If not, I'm gonna blame my buddy Dennis Terrell because I use his new Excel spreadsheet that he's given away and i uh, link it in the description. It's pretty awesome. It takes a lot of guesswork out of it and I hope it comes out right, but you can calculate this like I've always done with a calculator, but that really makes it nice. And anyway, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna take this over to bandsaw cut these up because the pattern is here on the front of the billet. We want it on top of the billet. So we have to cut it up and flip these tiles to expose the pattern on top. Then we will forge weld it, all these tiles forge weld and draw it out to create our final billet. So we'll take this over to the bandsaw, get these all cut and we'll prepare them to forge weld. All right, I got everything tiled out with that dollar store bandsaw that I have. Um, I had to make a jaw fart to hold it, but because of the billet so short, and I really struggle getting good straight cuts with that thing, but regardless, we got it. So now what we have to do is, since we cut it here, this is where our pattern is. We've got to flip these to get the pattern on top. So I'm going to rotate every other one to accomplish that. And I'm going to put this piece on the end. This is going to be the um, tang end of the blade that I make anyway out of the billet. So, but that's what we're going to have. I'm going to take these plates I've got here, tack them down on here, cover it up. It'll be sealed. I'm not gonna put any welding on top up here. I don't like to do that. I'm gonna TIG the sides, just fuse it, and then fuse it and seal it all the way around. So it's gonna be on here like this, like that, and sealed all the way around. Then I'll put a handle on it and we will do the forge weld. Okay, I got everything sealed up and what I like to do is go over to my wire wheel, brush it down real good and make sure I don't have any pinholes anywhere, any gaps, um, you know, that would allow oxygen in. And I'm, the older I get, the harder it is for me to see and can't weld like I used to. So I brush it down real good. Now I know some of you will probably ask, the sheet metal I'm using is stainless. I've got plenty of it so I use it a lot of thin 20 gauge sheet uh, metal that I've collected over the years. And it uh, works great because it don't weld. So it's 316L, it won't weld to this. And what I like to do is make a couple, two or three 
passes doing my forge wells, then I'll just knock this off and I'm gonna take a look to make sure I have no coal shuts. If I do, I'll grind them off because I don't wanna just keep pushing them in. And with this uh, Harbor Freight old 20 year old bandsaw I got, it's wore out. It's really hard to get good straight cuts and get everything flat. You really need to surface grind your billet all the way around before you go to cutting it up too. So, but I think we'll get a good forge well. I don't know if the pattern will be worth flip, but we got, we'll get a good forge weld. All right, I got the sheet metal peeled off and I went ahead and just cleaned it up, make sure I had no coal shuts here and the sides. Then I do a quick test etch, just dip it in, take it out, and that'll let me see if there's any stainless or inclusions from where I fused it all the way around. And I see I've got a couple here, right here and one down here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's one right here, a little bitty spot. And that's why I do this. Uh, I like to clean it up and I'll just run it over to the grinder, knock that off, and it'll be ready to go back into the forge and draw it out. But that would probably flake off, but I don't want to take any chances. And the reason I say that is because it's happened to me in the past. And there's nothing like having some kind of little weld inclusion right in the spot where you need it not to be. When you draw this out, especially when you're dealing with uh, not a whole lot of billet here that I can use. Some of this is going to be tang, and from about here to there is going to be blade. So you want to make sure you save as much as you can. A little spot there, there, there. I'm going to knock those off, stick it back in the forge. Well, I've got the billet cleaned up and I did a test etch on it. Right now, it's a little over a quarter inch on the billet. And the pattern come out pretty good. I think I'm gonna call this ladder explosion, but I've still got room to draw it out and is why I left the handle on here because I haven't fully decided what I'm gonna make with it yet, the, the style blade. And I wanted to leave the handle on there take a look at the pattern, see how much billet I have to work with, and then uh, make a decision. And I'm pretty close. I'm within a couple blades on the side right now. At over a quarter inch, I, I can draw it out quite a bit more and still have plenty of uh, thickness there to work with after surface grinding and heat treating and all that stuff. The pattern's a little tight and dense. I could probably use less um, stacks there you know before i started four-way and and uh but it still looks good uh nice match up on the patterns so i'm pleased with that because of my crazy dollar store bandsaw that that i have tweaked and done all kind of stuff to try to make it cut straight it cuts fair but not like i would like it to it's very old and uh, you can kind of understand it's getting wore out, bearings or rollers and all that are getting wore out. And I've got everything tight, tuned as much as possible with this old thing. It just needs to be replaced or parts replaced. 
it's so it's pretty critical that you get all your pieces flat, get them cut straight and square. And every time you're forge welding, line up your patterns. Keep your pattern lined up from the beginning, you know, from the get go. With a feather pattern, um, you know, it's con still considered a mosaic. You don't have to worry about that so much because you're going to distort it so much, pattern's not going to really match anyway. But with a mosaic, you have to do that. And I'm going to show a shot here, insert of this pattern here, so you can see how it looks. It hasn't went through a proper etch and sanding. There's scratches still in it, but you can get the idea. So I have to decide what I'm going to do with this billet, and I will do that on a future video. I want to thank you for watching. Thanks to my patrons. I really appreciate your support. And we're going to see you on the next one.